Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner O'Connor and others from the DPU. My name is Paul Lipke, L-I-P-K-E. I will just make note as I start that these comments have been sent in a detailed letter to uh, the hearing officer, to Secretary Marini, and I will also pass in a written copy of the more detailed comments than my brief remarks today. I'm a Montague Franklin County resident. I'm also a healthcare energy expert, working closely with all the big hospitals in Boston, the Mass Hospital Association, and many hospitals statewide. Uh, for affiliation only, I'm not representing them. I'm senior energy advisor for Healthcare Without Harm, uh, and I co coordinate the Boston Green Ribbon Commission Healthcare Working Group. So I have a little healthcare background. I'm frequently asked to help Massachusetts policymakers understand energy's health impacts and costs. As many other speakers before me, I'm asking you to deny Pickers Gas petition, petition and its related agreements. They fail to meet your own standards of review and holdings on the public interest. They fail on five grounds at least, and especially on public health. Berkshire's project, can be modeled using something called the Healthcare Energy Impact Calculator, which is based on US EPA and DOE data, as well as peer-reviewed environmental health science. In the handout you have, which I just passed up, it shows the emissions from the consumption just of the 36,000 decatherms. We're not even talking about Northeast Energy Direct, just the picture gas portion. Would cause annually some thousands of cases of respiratory asthma, respiratory symptoms, chronic bronchitis, hospital visits, lost work days, even premature death. These will cost the Commonwealth some 71 cents per million BTU in societal costs, about 8 cents per million BTU in direct medical treatment costs. That's $9.5 million for this region on the external costs and a million dollars annually for healthcare providers in this region. That's a lot of money just on the direct emissions. And that's if we burn them in the most efficient, cleanest burning industrial turbines. That says nothing about what might be burned in residential or less clean operations. You have the numbers in front of you. These sobering impacts ignore Northeast direct many orders of magnitude larger impacts and its climate de destabilization components. These are things that Berkshire Gas is relying on for its 1%, et cetera. The World, Health the World Health Organization and numerous medical societies have declared that climate change is the greatest public health threat of this century. It is, all, it is already causing serious illness, injury, and death in Massachusetts and worldwide. The last number I saw was 270,000 people worldwide last year attributed to climate change. It is scientifically and medically impossible to have healthy people, communities, and economy if we continue to destroy the foundation of human health, healthy land, air, and water, however unintentionally or regretfully we might feel about shorter-term gains. The proposed petition and related agreements put industry profits ahead of the well-being of our citizens, especially our most vulnerable children, elders, and the poor. They impose substantial health costs at a time when we are trying to bend that cost curve downward. The deep, this DPU, operating under an administration led by a former healthcare executive, cannot and should not ignore those costs and impacts. Berkshire's position should fail on four more grounds, at least. The methodology used to establish its planning load of 36,000 decatherms a day is fundamentally flawed and distorted overstating demand and discounting the possibility of lower impact alternatives. It has not shown this agreement as the lowest cost timely alternative, especially where modest NNG storage facilities, expanded feed lines, and new smaller compressor stations have previously sufficed. It does not contribute to source diversity or price hedge mitigation. It increases our dependence on fossil fuels and climate destabilization. The radical left-wing organization known as the University of Texas <laughs> conducted a multidisciplinary, multi-year study on national frack gas resources, including the Marcellus Shale, 
Those other studies show that those gas supplies are substantially overestimated. Even the EIA admitted that. And several forecasts that they will begin to decline as soon as 2018. So the year that Ned might, in theory, come online, Marcellus starts to decline by some projections. It will not hedge price. In the graphic you have, you will see it in the, in the winter of 2014, the natural gas prices in Pennsylvania, in the heart of the Marcellus Shale, spiked to the same prices we had here. If buyers at the wellhead are not shielded, no additional pipeline capacity here will protect us, especially when many actors, as others have said, want to export that gas to more lucrative markets. I'm done. Go ahead. She is continuing my remarks. Uh, my name is Mickey McKinley, M-C-K-I-N-L-E-Y, and I live in Montague, Massachusetts, and I have been an environmental educator for my career. Um, and continuing Paul's thoughts, there are better solutions, including market reforms, accelerated fixing of leaks, more rigorous air sealing and installation of buildings, and as we've heard, high efficiency air, to air heat pumps and aggressive grid modernization. So it's, I ask you to take your old standards seriously and deny Berkshire's petition, which leaves us without solutions for at least three and a half years especially given there is significant risk, fortunately, that Northeast Direct will never be built. Governor Baker's press secretary, Elizabeth Gordon, has written recently that Baker does not support the construction of new pipeline infrastructure along entirely new routes. We've gotten ourselves into the current energy and climate mess by making many too narrow, siloed decisions that failed to address systemic problems so we're counting on the department and Baker administration to do better. Uh, use this decision and others coming, uh, upcoming to advance the public interest and diversify our energy solutions and supply. Please set the Commonwealth on a better path. Please deny this petition and related agreements as a first step to a better future. Thank you. I want to thank the panel for um, enjoying this educational evening with us and thank the audience for all the energy that's been generated of a different kind. Um, as we've been hearing, there, there is a dire and urgent need to put this issue into the broad perspective of the actual viability of our one and only planet. About a hundred years ago, this entire country had no electricity. We must not lose sight of the forest for the trees. That's not the greatest metaphor. Even at the more parochial level, however, when, when all multitude of verified data is fully examined, it becomes clear that this proposed very excessive supply of fracked gas would not end up being cheap, nor safe, nor needed. It behooves all involved parties to deeply and fully study all the aspects of this profound issue. One brief and recent piece of data relating to the many aspects of safety of this proposed venture is a recent peer-reviewed study conducted by researchers at the Colorado School of Public Health along with Brown University that found an associate quote, an association between the density and proximity of natural gas wells within a 10 mile radius of maternal residence and the prevalence of congenital heart defects, as well as possible links to defects of the brain and spinal cord. Their alert further states that with the explosive growth of fracking and the drilling of new oil and gas wells across the United States, including in large population areas, we are placing our infants and children at risk of devastating birth defects and other harms, a wide range of other harms. My own further inquiry would be regarding the life 
every five to ten miles, can, can go every five to ten miles, but I'm not sure we've been really given all those details. Please, Reverend. Yes. Um, uh, my last <laughs> approval of this project would ultimately be far from serving the needs of our planet, nor the residents of this paradise that we call Franklin County. One other line by Wendell Berry, nature is party to all our deals and decisions, and she has more votes, a longer memory, and a sterner sense of justice than we do. My name, can you hear me? Yes. Good. My name is Penny Novak. N-O-V-A-C-K. I live in Buckland, Massachusetts, and I'm a great-grandmother, and I'm here to represent my great-grandchildren. I've loved the things people have been saying, a lot of facts, a lot of thought, a lot of simply stating the feelings of their constituencies and so on. The only thing that wasn't mentioned that I think is pertinent is that natural gas, the thing called natural gas, is a byproduct of when they are separating out petroleum, making oil and gasoline, and so on and so forth. It's the lightest form of that. And that's, that's the actual natural gas. What's coming through from the fracking is methane. It's really something different. And it's a lot more of a problem to the environment when it escapes. And as you know from what other people have been saying, this has been happening a lot from the Kinder Morton pipelines. We don't want that here. I don't want that around my great-grandchildren. I'm very fortunate. My children live in the area, and so do my great-grandchildren. We just don't want that. And, you know, we're not city people. We aren't used to being nothing in our communities. We're used to going to town meeting and deciding together what we're doing. It's very hard for us to think in terms of some corporate power <laughs> just walking right over us. Um, I've been paying attention to the news on this matter ever since it began. It hasn't gotten any better. I don't believe their claims that they're going to give us jobs, and I'll tell you why. Because in other places, they brought in their own people. They temporarily hired a few workers. What's a little temporary work? when our grandchildren and great-grandchildren and their children will be paying the price forever. <laughs> Thank you very much.